Alex Cole here with Bobcad Cam. In this video, I'd like to do a brief overview of the Bobcad Cam UI and then also some of the CAD functions, and we'll draw a little part. So let's go ahead and get started. On the screen here, I've already got the software open, and the main area in the graphics that we see here in this graphics window, um, this is our CAD window. So this is where we draw geometry, this is where we see the geometry and so on that we're going to work with. On the left-hand side, we have a docked pane that contains four tabs. So we have the data entry tab, we have the uh, CAD tree, we have the CAM tree, and we have the BobArt tab. So these tabs are used for different things. The data entry tab will be prompted as we use functions and commands in the software uh, for user inputs and so on. The CAD tree is where the history is for when we're constructing solids or using CAD functions that record to the tree, and we can get to those items to change parameters after we've uh, completed a function and so on. Uh, the CAM tree is used for where we're going to create our tool paths and our CAM functions. Um, so this is going to be used for programming the parts, programming the jobs, and um, you know generating the NNC code for your machines. The BobArt tab is for our BobArt module. So this is used for creating organic shapes and sign making and things like that. Um, and it's got a lot of useful functions in there as well. On the right hand side, we have a docked pane, and this contains our layers uh, tab, the UCS tab, and our posting window. So the layers tab is the tab where you can create different layers to put geometry on. Um, so this is a way to organize your geometry in the file so that you can turn visibility on and off um, and keep things organized. The UCS page is for user coordinate systems. So as we're constructing CAD geometry, um, we can define different planes and different coordinate systems um, you know, for us to construct that geometry on. And then the posting window, when you run the post processor after you've created a CAM job and you've created your tool paths, you can run the post processor and it will generate the NC code for your machine. And that code will then be displayed in this posting window. Across the top, we have our ribbon bar um, with many different uh, tabs to that. So we have um, the file page. If you click on file, it'll take you to the backstage, what we refer to the backstage. And you can you know, open and save files. You can get to recent files list um, and get into the settings and so on. The home page or the home tab on the ribbon bar is going to take you to your selection functions. Um, create 2D is where you'll go for creating 2D geometry like um, lines and arcs and splines. Wireframe type geometry is constructed from this tab. Create 3D takes you to our surface and solid modeling tools. So you can construct primitives like cylinders and cubes. You can um, do solid uh, operations like Boolean subtract or Boolean add or extrude boss. And then we have our fu uh, surface functions where you can create surface patches uh, using you know, various different methods like you know, three edge or sweep and things like that. Um, the Utilities tab is actually going to hold our uh, functions like Translate, Rotate, and Scale. Um, we also have our 2D CAD trimming functions are found under here and some other utilities as well. Evaluate is the tab where you can create dimensions and you can measure entities and things like that. Uh, so this evaluate tab um, contains those functions, and then the cam, cam tab, excuse me, <clears throat> the cam tab, um, you know, gives us options and, and functions for going into, um, you know, different cam related uh, items like getting into um, our current settings or tool libraries, things like that. Now a lot of these functions can also be um, accessed through different means in the software, either by right-click menus or, or so on. Um, you know, for example, I'm on the cam tree tab over here in the left pane. I can right-click and create a new job from here or get to my tool libraries and so on. 
Okay, so let's take a look at drawing some 2D geometry. So on the Create 2D tab, I'm going to choose the Line option. And we have different line modes that are selectable once we enter this option. Um, note that any of these uh, icons that you see up in the ribbon bar, we can click the down arrow and we can go directly into a specific mode. Um, or you can just simply click on the option and then select the mode once you're inside. So right now I'm in line sketch enter, so I can either enter the values for the start and end point of this line that I want to construct, um, or I can click out in the CAD window and select the two endpoints. Now we can see that this entity is on the screen and it's kind of in a bold state right now. So it's in that bold state because this entity is considered to be live. Um, because I can still modify its parameters. So if I wanted to change its length, say, to 4 inches, um, or change the angle of this, let's say, to 35 degrees, then what happens is that entity still gets updated in the CAD window. Once we're ready to accept the, the, the entity that we want to create, we can go ahead and just click the OK button. The next thing I want to talk about is the CAD preview. So um, still in the line command, um, when I click out here, we can see this preview, this amber preview that's being shown of the line. So this is just giving us an idea of that line. And this brings us to uh, two other topics that we have. Um, as you can see, as I'm moving this along, I'm getting these dotted lines that are showing up from um, the other parts of the entity. So there's a couple of different built-in tools and utilities to help your CAD drawing um, you know, functions and stuff like that. So one is this construction geometry. So as we're moving this around, these dotted lines are snapping to endpoints and they're snapping to verticals um, relative to endpoints of existing geometry. And this is part of our um, tools that you can control down here in the lower right of kind of the, the status bar, I'll call it here. So we have this option, use construction geometry and XY tracking. So if you don't want those lines to pop up and these little reference items to, to show up on the screen, you can turn that function off by simply clicking that option down here at the lower right. And we can see now that I'm not getting any of those reference geometry markers on in our window anymore. Um, you can turn that back on. Next to it, we actually have our snap grid. So if I put this to a larger increment by changing the value, let's say a half inch, then when I snap the cursor, the endpoint of this line is now snapping to half inch increments in this grid that's in the CAD window. And you can change the increment of that grid on the fly by simply changing the value to what you want. And we can see that it will update even though I'm in the middle of a CAD function. And we can also just simply turn that off by clicking the little enable disable snap icon down there. And now this is no longer snapping. It's going to the exact cursor position as I move it along. Um, so those are some pretty useful functions there. Um, the next item that I want to highlight is our snap points. So when you hover over an existing entity, um, these blue spheres will show up on that entity. And those represent, in this case on a line, it's each endpoint and the midpoint of that entity. On an arc, you'll get one at each of the quadrants on the arc as well as that arc center. And when your cursor, when you hover the cursor over and that sphere highlights red, that's indicating that the system is going to snap to that point. Um, so you want to make sure that you get it highlighted um, to where that is selected as red to ensure that you're snapping to that endpoint. Um, so that's a little bit about our grids and our snap points and our construction geometry to help you get going. So I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen and then we'll get to the next section here. All right, so let's back out of this command and I'm going to use the select 
command up here. And I'm just going to window that geometry and press the delete key on the keyboard. And now we've gotten rid of that, that geometry. Okay, so moving on, what I want to do is I actually want to um, start working on drawing a part. And the part that we're going to work on is, a, is kind of like a, a spring perch. Um, and we're going to use several commands. Uh, to do that. So uh, let's go ahead and we're going to start with the rectangle command and I'm going to make the length of my rectangle uh, two and a half inches and I'm going to make the width of our rectangle um, six inches. Okay and we can see that the preview in the CAD window was updating. Now because I brought my cursor over into the CAD window um, that shape started following my cursor um, but that's okay if I still want to construct this thing on 0, 0, 0 for the base point if I don't click anywhere in the CAD space if I just simply click the OK button it will construct that geometry at these coordinates so I've constructed a rectangle on my screen and the next thing that I want to do is go ahead and create an arc so clicking on the arc command, we're defaulting into the arc center option, which means that we are, uh, the coordinates are defining the center point of this arc. So using the rest of the commands, I'm going to go ahead and continue to construct the arc the way that I want. And what we want is a four inch diameter, um, and we want this to be negative, the center of this arc, about three and a half inches negative an X. So for the center location, I'm going to change this X value to minus 3.5 and press the tab key and that will update our preview. And then I can look at that preview and determine if that's where I want this arc to be. Looks pretty good. So now what I want to do is I want to, I'm going to actually change the start angle and this will just save me from needing to uh, trim the geometry later. Um, so the start angle in this particular case I want to start at 270 degrees and I want it to end at 90 degrees and this is giving me a half half arc um, on this left side and now that, that that is what I want so I'm going to go ahead and just click the OK button to accept that and then cancel to close that option so now we have our half circle uh, on this left side, but what I would like to do is join this now to our rectangle. So I'm going to use the line command again, and I'm going to use those snap points. I'm going to hover over our arc. We can see those snap points pop up, and I'll just click on this snap point, and I'll do the same thing for the corner of our rectangle. And then I will come back down to the arc, and I will snap the next one so that I can join both sides. OK when I'm done and cancel to close the, the command. So I now have my arc and my join lines going to our rectangle, but I want to duplicate this to the other side. So I'm going to use um, the mirror command found on the utilities tab to mirror that geometry. So for the selected geometry, I'm simply going to drag a window over the the entities that I want to select and it has picked those and we can see that we already have a CAD preview because this defaults to mirror about a plane and it's mirroring on the YZ plane which happens to be correct in this scenario um, but the important thing that we need to know is that we need to make sure that we have this copy option turned on if we don't then it'll just simply move that geometry over there uh, so with copy turned on, I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And now we have our copy of that geometry on the right side. OK, so we're actually already almost there. Um, I want to go ahead and get rid of these two vertical lines. So I'm going to use the select mode icon. And I will, again, just window real quick to pick those two lines and then press the delete key on my keyboard to get rid of the unwanted geometry. Now, these, this, this part right now has a bunch of sharp corners and um, what I wanna do is I actually want to um, put fillets on those corners. So I wanna put little radiuses on all of the corners of this part. 
So on the Create 2D tab, I'm going to go to our Fillet command. And this is what we can use to put a rounded edge on a corner. And I'm going to specify the radius. Actually, 0.125 does seem about right. And I can either pick between two entities, um, which I would need to select the two pieces of geometry, and it will put a fillet between those two specific pieces. Or I can use the chain command. So I'm going to select the chain command because I actually want to chain the entire piece. So I'm going to hold down the shift key on my keyboard and I'm going to click one of the entities and that's going to select the entire part uh, or the entire chain. So once that is selected, I can say OK and it will go ahead and apply that fillet, fillet to all of those corners. OK, so the next step in this will be to um, you know, we can start getting into the CAM programming. But before we get there, I want to cover some of the graphics, like the viewing tools inside of the graphics area. So if I press down the control key on my keyboard and I press down the middle mouse wheel on my mouse and I move my mouse around while I'm still holding that wheel down, that, that mouse wheel button, I can pan my geometry around the graphics area. So this allows me to pan. It's not going to rotate. It's just going to slide it around so I can view. Now, if I let go of control and if I just scroll the middle mouse wheel, I can zoom in and out on my geometry. If I press the middle mouse button down without pressing any other keys and I move my mouse, it will rotate the view in the CAD window. OK, so again, that's control plus middle mouse allows us to pan. Just scrolling the middle mouse allows us to zoom. An important thing to note about the zoom is wherever my mouse cursor is, the system defaults to wherever the mouse cursor is, is the point that it's going to zoom in and out of. So as you're sitting here working with a part, interrogating a part, um, just know that you can kind of quickly navigate around a part by simply moving your mouse and zooming in and out. <clears throat> so you can save a lot of time that way. All right, so to get back into a top view, we can simply click on this icon here, which is kind of the quick select for the top view. We can click the down arrow next to that command, and we can access any of the particular views that we want, like the front side, uh, the right side, the left side, or the back of the part, or we have different ISO views as well. Okay, so that pretty much wraps it up for drawing on this CAD portion. Um, in the next video, what I'm going to cover is going through and creating tool paths to cut this type, this fabrication type part out. Uh, for like an example, laser plasma water jet type machines. Thank you very much.